Hello and welcome to The Breakfast Show on 93.1 FM Generation Radio. I'm Mike Paul and today we'll be discussing the proposed changes to the way that you apply to university. Now in previous years, teachers needed to predict grades for students for them to apply to university. However, now the changes will see that the dates students can apply to university will move forward by 15 days, allowing people to get their grades and therefore enabling them to make informed choices about which university to apply to. Last year, only 51% of the predicted grades were accurate, which meant that 40,000 applicants went into clearing. We asked the students of Derby University what they thought about the changes. I disagree because it'll take less time to apply for uni. I think it's better for universities as they get actual grades from students, but students have less time to choose where they want to go. I agree with the changes because I know that my actual grades will be better than my predicted grades. I disagree because we won't have enough time to apply to uni. Up now we got Labyrinth with Earthquake. Labyrinth, come in. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is something they call a groundbreaker. So let me first apologize to the shirts and the ties for your makeup. Now we have Scott Shannon with a student who is currently applying for university next year. Okay, Ben, if it was up to you, would you change the way you apply at university? Um, I don't know if I personally would, but it seems that as a nation they're trying to almost get it more in line with the way the US do it over there, where you have your SAT results and once you get those results you then apply after it. I think personally it seems logical kind of because then you know what you've got and at least then you know what you're aiming for, whereas you're kind of guessing where, where you're going to be and you know if it all goes up, you're kind of screwed if you don't have a proper backup. Uh, would you consider this will be an easier way to apply them? I think it would be an easier way, other than, but it depends all on the timing and everything, because if it's anything like going through clearing, is where clearing's just a mess, and it's just a, it depends how they issue the places, whether it's first come, first serve, or what, what it's based on like that, but it could be a better way, I think. I believe that you also took a gap year. Did you do so because you found it would be easier to deal with um, applying without having to worry about your exams as well? well what, the reason I took a gap year was because with my exams, the universities I applied for were too high, and so my predicted, the predicted grades were too high, and eventually I dropped down and then tried to go through clearing and didn't get anywhere, so I had to take a gap year that way and because of that I ended up with an unconditional offer which is kind of what you would expect to see with people getting their results before they go and they apply to uni. Generation Radio. Do you agree with the changes? If so, text us on 93100 starting a message with uni. Text will be charged at standard rates, so make sure you got the permission of the bill payer. Right, so tell us what you think. Later on, we'll be hearing from Olivia Ramsbottom, who is head of the admissions team at Derby University. But right now, we've got Rihanna's new hit for you, We Found Love. We've had loads of reaction on the text. Josh from Liverpool texting saying that it is a good idea to move the date of application forward because then people can make a better choice when applying to uni. He also says he didn't get a place from applying last year, had to go into clearing and eventually didn't make it onto any university courses. We've had a lot of text saying that people agree with the new process. Keep your text coming in, guys. Generation Radio. So here we have Olivia Ramsbottom on the phone to tell us about her thoughts on the changes. Olivia, what positives come from the proposed changes? OK, so the changes that UCAS is proposing are that people apply for university after they've got their results. So uh, you will know very well that the current system relies on people having their grades predicted accurately so that universities can tell whether they will achieve the right level of qualification before they come to university. The new proposal is that students will apply for university once they've passed their A-levels and they've got their grades. I'm using A-levels as an example. We obviously take students with a whole range of other qualifications. So the benefits are to the students. They know exactly where they are. They aren't sort of chancing it. You know, at the moment, you can get an offer for a place, but you don't know whether you're actually going to go to that university until August, do you? You're, you're, you're holding places, but there's an absolute level of uncertainty until August. 
the new system would say, right, I've got my results. This is where I can go because I know the entry criteria for those universities. Make me an offer. Yes, I'm coming to you. Very straightforward. But there are obviously lots of problems with the situation as well. The thing I like about the new process is that predicted grades are absolutely unreliable. So UCAS in its process has actually highlighted that there's a large percentage, I think it's between 40 and 50% of grades are actually over-predicted. So they're not accurate. So we're actually working with invalid data to make offers in the first place. So that's one of the main problems with the current system. So do you encourage these changes? I think that... Absolutely, I would encourage the system to be changed so that students are applying once they know their results and we know their results. However, you've got a big problem, I'm sure uh, you're aware of this, that that would mean fitting the application process, the proper sort of mechanics of the application process between the time people get their results and the time they start a university. So the proposals require A-level exams to be taken earlier, results to be out earlier, and also universities to start later. So the application process now, the mechanics of it, again, you know, the actual, here's my application, will you take me or not, will have to operate between July and early October. And that means that obviously we've got a lot less time as an institution to process applications. So the principle, absolutely right, but will the mechanics work? So despite all of the issues, do you think it will be fairer? Yes, I would say it was a fairer system for all the students because it actually is based on valid, real data. You know, what your results are, not what somebody reckons you're going to get and not what teachers think they should say people are going to get to get them into university because that's a critical point. If you've got a student in front of you as a school teacher who says, I want to go to, you know, let's use Oxford as an example, then there's a lot of pressure on that teacher to predict their grades higher so that they will even stand a chance of getting an offer. But that's not realistic. And we know, again, from the UCAS data that 40 to 50 percent of grades are, uh, predicted grades are unreliable and invalid. So it's fairer. Whether it can be done or not, I don't know. Thank you very much for that, Olivia. No problem. Coming up later, we have all of the latest sports and weather updates, plus all of your views on this week's X Factor results. To tell us what you think, join us on our Facebook page or tweet us using hashtag Generation Radio. Right now we've got Joel Ward with today's weather forecast. Today is going to be mostly dry with the occasional light shower in the northeast. Scotland will see two to three inches of snow overnight with a chance of snowfall throughout the day tomorrow. The rest of the week should stay dry with a chance of temperature staying around two degrees. Wind will come from the east, mainly in Essex and across East London. Join me tomorrow at six o'clock for further updates. Generation Radio. Thanks very much for that, Joel. Uh, you've actually got a bit of news for us, haven't you? I have. I will be moving on. I'm leaving here, going to BBC Derby Radio. A step up there. You're going to be the uh, the drive time weatherman, is it not? I am. Yes, improvements for me. Well, uh, I know. I know. I said I wouldn't do much for this, but we've actually got you oh. a card and a bottle of wine. Just say thanks for all your time here. You shouldn't have. <laughs> thanks well, uh, a lot. I know you said not to, but uh, have you got a few words you want to say to our listeners at the moment? Yeah. Thanks for everyone. Keep listening. It's still going to be good. Scott's going to take over from me, who's still a good weatherman himself. He's got. Yeah. Uh, he's got big boots to fill there, hasn't he? Yeah. Well, I am the best in the uh, business, I'd say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, keep listening. Thanks for everyone who's been here. Thank you. Brilliant. All right, well, thanks for all your time here. Cheers.